Where does college football guru Phil still have BYU's position groups ranked, and where does he project BYU to go this season? We got a little bit of a preview of that a few days back in his digital magazine drop. We'll get to that ahead on today's show, and we'll also talk about the life and legacy, one of the all-time BYU legends who I think gets overlooked because it is his day. One of the few numbers, if not the only number, that is permanently permanently retired by the BYU football program. All that and more ahead on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, my friends? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. But more importantly, thank you for making us here on Locked On Cougars, your first listen of the day. We are very proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. The goal here, simply stated, is to make you the smartest BYU fan in the room by giving you the latest news, intel, and information that you guys need to know when it comes to being a Cougar fan. So without further ado, let's dive on in and talk some BYU football. Phil Steele, of course, writes his annual college football preview, and I believe he is the guru of all gurus when it comes to projecting the season ahead in college football and he has dropped his 2022 edition the print edition is on its way i am supposed to be getting that in my mailbox any day now and super excited obviously have the hard copy i actually think let's see yeah i got it right here i got the 2021 edition right here so i'm looking forward to having the 2022 edition in my hands right uh shortly but i actually uh had a chance to check out his digital edition i had a chance to subscribe get a special deal where i actually got access to his digital uh, uh, drop, which I think dropped over the weekend, if not maybe towards the tail end of last week. I wanted to talk about where he projects BYU with regards to their overall program and then individual position groups. I think there's some interesting rankings in all this. Let's start off with this. He has BYU as his number 10, quote, surprise team going into the year. And that's not all that surprising. I know I'm stealing a term from Mr. Steele, but I think the biggest thing is is that BYU – they look like a team that is poised to do something special going into Big 12 play. Obviously, you got to go out and prove it on the field. We have talked about this in the past, but apparently Phil still believes that BYU could turn some heads this year. I am fully expecting BYU to be a preseason top 25 team. The quote here uh, from Phil still says, my number 10 surprise team is the BYU Cougars. Has BYU Cougars, BYU will be joining the Big 12 next year and looked like a Power 5 team last year. They went 5-0 and versus the Pac-12, eating, even beating Pac-12 champ Utah. BYU has 19 returning starters, so they are a veteran team with a lot of talent as they rank in my top units in seven of the eight categories. They host Baylor and Arkansas, play Oregon, Notre Dame, and Boise State on the road. I was surprised they came up at number 13 in my power poll, and if they run the table versus the schedule, they will have a shot at making the playoff. Now, he's not the first to say if BYU runs the table against the schedule, they could make the playoff, and I don't think it's all that surprising. If you go out and win the uh, type of games that BYU has on the schedule this year because Baylor figures to be top 25, Notre Dame will probably be top 10, if not top 5, Oregon's probably a top 25 team, same with Arkansas. That is four top 25 teams alone there. Boise State could get into that mix. Uh, Who knows? Stanford, if they have a little bit of a surprise season towards the tail end of the year, could be a very good win for BYU on Thanksgiving weekend. There's a lot uh, to go on with regards to BYU's chances of making noise nationally. But I think the biggest thing for BYU is the goal should be to make another 10-win-plus season a reality. Having won 30-plus games going into Big 12 play, BYU be well-poised to compete right away in the Big 12 if everything goes according to plan this year. So, When it comes to the individual uh, position group rankings, Phil still lays these all out. He starts off with quarterbacks, and he has BYU at number 40 in his position group uh, rankings. And I'm not surprised by this because Jaron Hall obviously is a proven option. Many of you out there, I did an episode, it's going back maybe two weeks now, where I said that Jaron Hall, I think, could be a first-round draft pick. And trust me, that got all kinds of uh, people saying he's not that good or he is that good in our YouTube mentions. And if you're subscribed on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe. There's a little thing down in the right corner uh, that say, click for new podcasts, subscribe, enable notifications, leave us your comments, like the show. It helps us build our audience. We are closer and closer. We did a giveaway at 500 subscribers. Looking forward to giving 
away at a thousand subscribers once again some byu gear so if you want your chance to win that swag well guess what you can help us get to a thousand i think uh, as of recording of this podcast i'm recording this on monday night we have 851 subscribers or 149 subscribers away from that thousand subscriber giveaway mark if you want to be part of that Get subscribed now on YouTube, even if you're not planning on watching it on YouTube. Help us build this audience, subscribe, and continue to listen to it wherever you listen to your podcast. I appreciate you guys doing that. But at number 40 for quarterbacks, not all that surprising because Jaron Hall, he's the headliner. He is very, very good. We all know that. He is an NFL talent. But if he does get hurt, Jacob Conover, I, I said, I believe that this kid uh, could really surprise some folks after battling some of his uh, demons, as it were, his mental health issues. If he's able to step up, BYU will be okay at the quarterback position, but there's just so many unknowns. Obviously, Baylor Romney was very good, but then retired at the end of last year. You got Cade Fennigan there as well as Sol J. Mayava Peters in the mix. I am not surprised by BYU being ranked number 40 just because of the unknowns behind Jaron Hall. If Baylor Romney was still playing football for BYU, I would be stunned if this position group was not inside the top 20, if not the top 15. This is a that'd be a very, very talented position group with two proven starting caliber quarterbacks at that group. Now, at running back, they are not ranked according to Phil Still. I'm not a lot surprised by this. When you have one of the great running backs of all time in program history and Tyler Algier exit the program, not all that surprising. I think Lopini Kakatoa comes back, and obviously Christopher Brooks figures to be your lead back if everything goes according to plan for BYU, and they actually may end up being better than most people project them. You, you can't be any worse than not being ranked and go out and surprise some folks. I know that BYU is very bullish on their running backs, despite having lost Tyler Algier, there's a lot of optimism that Christopher Brooks is going to be a very adequate, if not more than capable, replacement for Algier and figures to be featured prominently in this offense. Now, obviously, a running back is a quarterback's best friend in the backfield, but he also needs his receivers. Guys go out and catch the ball for him. At receiver, BYU checks in at number 22 with Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney leading the way. This is actually about where I would probably put the wide receiving core because if you were to have a guy like Samson Nakua and or uh, Neil Pau'u with Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney, I could see this wide receiving core being top 15, if not top 10. Losing those two, Hurts a little bit, but you have two headliners. You're obviously going to have guys, Chase Roberts, Cody Epps, expected to step up and take on a more prominent role. And then obviously the tight end position. If Isaac Rex were fully healthy, and the expectation is he will be ready to go for fall camp, but if he were healthy and not having gone through offseason surgeries, I think that this group might be a little bit higher with Isaac Rex being fully healthy. You got Dallin Holker, who looks poised to have a monster year, it feels like, this year. I think this wide receiving core could surprise a lot of folks. I, I, I think this wide receiving and slash tight end core is as good as it comes when it, when it comes to BYU. They are just flat out awesome. And if they achieve their expectations and their potential, this group could operate as a top 10 type unit if everything comes into focus. Like I said, there's there's just not, it's kind of similar to the quarterback position where behind Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney, it's a lot of unknowns with regards to the wide receivers, but I, I'm bullish on their chances at the wide receiver position. Now, the place that I absolutely love, and I think I, I'm actually thinking they might be underrated here, is the offensive line. They have them at number 11, speaking of Phil Still. He says, BYU's offensive line, quote, uh, last year they lost two and a half starters and were banged up, starting the same lineup back-to-back -back just twice after week three. They had similar numbers to 2020 when they faced a much lighter schedule with 5.1 yards per carry and just 15 sacks. This year, seven of the eight offensive linemen that started last year are back, and they have 90 career starts and add Phil Still transfer number seven, Kingsley Su Suamataia, and Phil, Su Phil Still Junior College number 39, Lisala Tai. They also don't mention Sione Vecoso from Arizona State. I think 11's actually underrated for this BYU offensive line. This is a top 10 offensive line in the country. I don't make any bones about it. I think Blake Freeland, Clark Barrington, uh, Connor Pay. I think that right guard position is going to be a cavalcade of characters. Probably Joe Tukuaf, who has the inside track as the veteran at that spot. And then at right tackle, you could have Harris Lachance or Kingsley Suomati e out there at right tackle. I don't care who you put out there. BYU's offensive line is more than capable of going nine or 10 starting caliber linemen deep. This is as deep an offensive line as BYU has had in literally decades. I am a huge fan of this offensive line. I think that they are actually being underrated here at number 11 by Phil Steele. And I don't mean to come off and say that, well, Phil got it wrong. I don't think 11 is a bad place to be if you're BYU. I just feel like they're being a little bit underrated. Now, where does the offense, uh, no, excuse me, where does the defense check in as well as the special teams? Well, 
We'll get to that here in just a moment. But first, a word on our friends over at Bet Online. They are your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information need. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup with the NBA Finals. The NHL uh, Stanley Cup final begins later this week. Major League Baseball scores. And, of course, all the latest fight news from MMA to UFC and boxing. Oh, by the way, BYU basketball. I saw this actually just uh, earlier today as of recording the podcast. I saw this on Monday. The BYU basketball, uh, with their roster changes still in flux for the BYU men's basketball program, they had a 251 uh, to chances odd of making the NCAA tournament a couple weeks ago. Well, they updated those odds with the close of the open tran- not the open transfer period, the open recruiting period. Well, BYU. Same odds, 250 to 1. So if you want to get in on that, I think it's actually a pretty good bet if you're a BYU fan and want to toss some Skittles on it. Get to our and check out our friends at Bet Online. They are your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more, just like BYU basketball. Head to the website today. That's betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action available to you now. It's all courtesy of your friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Uh, a reminder for you guys that the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft starts June 16th with over 50 insiders. Nothing will equal the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. The Locked On NBA Big Board Draft Experts plus Odyssey's insiders will be making every pick and giving you unequaled access and insight. That first pick is June 16th later this week. Search out the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and follow now so you don't miss a pick if you're getting ready for the NBA Draft in just a few weeks' time. Actually, I think we're just over two weeks out. Crazily enough, it's coming fast, folks. So get ready for it with the ultimate NBA mock draft. All right, time to talk about the rest of these rankings from Phil Steele. On the defensive side of the football, the defensive line checks in at number 48. I'm actually surprised they're even ranked here, if I'm being honest. Uh, They have guys like Isaiah Moa and Brooks Miley coming in uh, off of missions in the case of Miley and Isaiah Moa, an early enrollee from the high school ranks. Losing a guy like Logan Fano to that ACL injury obviously hurts. But the hope is this defensive line, just with another year of experience, working in the rate, weight room, uh, getting that extra work when it comes to facing off against top talent, hopefully it'll be a better unit. I think just the overall chance to play football is going to be good for this defensive line. Do I think they're number 48 in the country? Man, I'm surprised they're even ranked. If the running back position for BYU is not ranked here, why is the defensive line ranked? Maybe Phil still was running out of people and said, you know what? Let's take a flyer on BYU. But uh, opposite this defensive line are three of Phil Still's top 10 offensive lines. So it's the crazy thing about this is BYU's defensive line, they're going to be battle-tested very early and often this season, and they're going to have to be ready for it. Uh, guys like Caden Hawes, uh, Nisa Mahe, John Nelson, Tyler Batty, they've all got to man up. they got to step up here. I've talked about it once. I'll talk about it again. This defensive line holds a major key to BYU's success or failure during the 2022 season. I know it's a lot to put on one position group, but we all know where the defensive deficiencies were at the tail end of last year, right along that defensive front. They've got to be better. Obviously, backing up those defensive linemen or the linebacking core, and Phil Steele has the Cougars checking in at number 12. They obviously uh, were a Unit that was decimated due to injury last year, losing Chaz Ayu, Keenan Peely, Peyton Wilgar, among others during the season. But Keenan Peely comes back, expected to be back healthy for fall camp. Peyton Wilgar and Chaz Ayu the same. If they're ready to go, they absolutely could achieve this, if not higher, in terms of a lofty ranking. Uh, as Phil still says that last year they returned three starters, but middle linebacker Keenan Peely was out for the year in week three. Ben Bywater took his place and became the number one tackler. This year they returned their number one, number two, number three, number five, number seven, number nine, and number 13 tacklers who were all linebackers. And, of course, they get Peely back. So this is a deep and talented group. He's not wrong about that. This linebacking core is very deep. It's very talented. The biggest issue is when guys like Keenan Peely, Peyton Wilgar, and Chaz all you went down last year, the guys who stepped up in their absence, Sands, Ben Bywater, did not get it done on a consistent basis. The issues along the defensive line were major and glaring, but the linebacking core, that depth, it needs to shine through. Having your headliners back to lead the linebacking core is a good thing for BYU if they stay healthy. They'll be just fine, but you got to have that depth. They got to be better. There's no doubt about that. All right, finally, two other position groups we need to talk about. The defensive backs, BYU number 27 here. Uh, typically I wouldn't expect to see BYU's defensive back unit being ranked this high, but with the amount of bodies coming back to BYU, both at safety and cornerback and adding guys like Gabe, Judy, Lally, a two-year starter, excuse me, three-year starter. I apologize in the sec started for parts of three seasons for Vanderbilt. 
man, there's a lot of talent there. D'Angelo Mandel, Caleb Hayes, Isaiah Heron, uh, Jacob Robinson, Micah Harper, Malik Moore, Taylor Alfrey, uh, coming off of an injury. You also got Chaz Ayu, who kind of plays between linebacker and defensive back. Just the sheer number of bodies for BYU. Emin Hanneman, another one that comes to mind for BYU in the defensive backfield. There's a ton of bodies for BYU to throw out there at both the cornerback and the safety positions. I'm actually not surprised by them being ranked number 27. Will they achieve this ranking if not exceed it? Only time will tell because we already talked about the fact that the number of high-level opponents BYU is going to face. They're going to be facing off against some very talented uh, wide receiving cores, tight ends, running backs, that type of those type of athletes. You got to be able to hold up against those guys on the back end. The good news is BYU has about as good a depth in the defensive secondary as I have seen in some time. They've done a good job focusing on this, developing that talent, building depth via transfer and also high school players that they have brought in. Uh, the poster child for what BYU's uh, the job they've done at defensive back. Well, it starts with a guy like Chris Wilcox. Most recent example is probably a guy like D'Angelo Mandel. You look at Isaiah Heron, who's been very good. And a guy like Gabe Judy Lally coming in, he figures to be right in the mix right away. And the funny thing, I didn't even mention Caleb Hayes, who's a grad transfer of his own from Oregon State, who went out there and was just an absolute pass breakup machine last year, despite not starting the early part of the season. So there's a lot of talent for BYU's defensive back uh, group, but they have to go out and prove it. I, I'm I'm I want so badly to believe in this in this defensive back core and believe they can just become an elite unit, but man, there's just something out there, and I just call it a gut feeling for me that I don't necessarily think that they are they quite there. I, I just there's something holding me back. I don't know what it is, and I could be proven wrong. I'd love nothing more than for this position group uh, to see my prediction for them and say, you know what, let's go shut that Jake guy up and and prove him wrong. I'd love nothing more than that. But I, there's just something telling me, man, the secondary there's just a missing element to it. Maybe it's just the fact that I, I they have been injured so often in the last couple of years with defensive secondary guys, guys like Chaz Ayu come to mind in particular. But if they go out and prove me wrong, I'd be nothing but happy to eat crow on that. Final thing here is the special teams unit. Obviously, having Jake Oldrade and Ryan Rico back, as well as Hobbs Nyberg, uh, leads this position group. They are number 13 in the rankings. The quote here is that kicker Jake Oldrade has a powerful leg and hit 13 of his 13 field goals in 2020. He was 9 of 13 a year ago in 2021, just for uh, comparison's sake. Uh, punter Ryan Rico had a 41.9 yard net. BYU was number six in my special teams ranking. They dropped to number 68, even with Rico going 42.8 net. Look for BYU to shoot up in the special teams ranking. Kings with Oldrade and Rico back. The hope is that Oldrade in particular, he's the reason why things fell off for BYU. The kicking game was not nearly as consistent as it was in 2020. If that returns to form in 2022, there's good reason that BYU special teams, yeah, they are a top 15 squad, if not top 10, because they were very, very good in 2020. Is already number six in the special teams rankings in the 2021 preseason rankings. There's no reason to think that having guys like Jake Oldrade and Ryan Rico with another year under their belt, they should be better, and BYU as a result should be better as well. So there you go. There are the rankings. Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. I'd like to know where you guys disagree or agree with this. As I said, I think the quarterback position, not all that surprise. I'm surprised the running backs are not ranked. Receivers, about where I thought they would be. Offensive line, I think, is underrated. Defensive line, I am as stunned as anybody. They are ranked, to recap. Linebacking core. Pretty lofty ranking to be number 12 in these position group rankings, but Phil still is a believer in them. As I said, the defensive backs, I want nothing more than for them to go out there and show me that they are a top 25 caliber unit. Uh, I just feel like there's just a missing element there. And then special teams, if they return to form like we saw in 2020, not surprised that they would achieve that number 13 ranking. So let me know what you guys think on our YouTube comments. Tweet at us, Locked On Cougars, or send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. Just search out Locked On Cougars wherever uh, you are on social media. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Jacob C. Hatch. Or as always, you can email the show, LockedOnYU at gmail.com. Uh, we have done this in the past. If there are any companies out there, if you work for a company like to advertise with us, we had a little bit of a lull going through a little bit of a transition with regards to sell stuff here on the lockdown pod but if you are a local company who would like to reach local byu fans and even nationwide in some cases and in 
even extreme cases internationally. We'd love nothing more than for you guys to be a part of the Locked On Cougars community. Send us a note, lockedonbyu at gmail.com. We'd love to get you in touch with our sales team and on the way to having advertising success with us here on Locked On Cougars. Uh, just be, it'd be a fun time for you guys to latch on now, get ready for the upcoming football season because it promises to, I think, be an absolute barn burner. And we'd love nothing more than to have you guys be a part of it along for the ride. We've had uh, literal uh, tens of different companies join us in our four plus years of experience that are local companies, both in Utah and even some nationwide. Love to have you guys along for the ride as well. Once again, that's locked on BYU at gmail.com. If you've got interest in doing that. All right, more in a moment. I'm going to talk about a very special player in BYU history. I don't think it's his due. It's his day today. We're going to talk about that as we continue on here with locked on Cougars. All right, as we finish up today's show, we are 81 days away from BYU football kicking off their season. Well, what is that significant for in with regards to BYU history? Well, the interesting part about this is that Marion Probert is number 81 in BYU history. And some of you may have realized this over the years. If you're a young enough fan, you may not realize this, but number 81 in BYU football is completely retired. No current player can wear the number 81 jersey, and it's because of Dr. Marion Probert. Uh, he was a player for BYU in the 1950s, uh, played for the Cougars. Uh, let me double check here. Uh, played, uh, so he was born in uh, Provo, Utah, funny enough, June 17th, 1933, but he attended Inglewood High School in California, where he found success playing football. During each of his three years playing for Inglewood, he was an All-Bay League uh, honoree. During his senior season, he was a high school All-American. So one of the really cool things about him is just he's an absolute incredible athlete. He is considered to be the first blue chip player in BYU football history to pick the Cougars. He had offers from the likes of USC and Stanford. He passed on those opportunities to come play for BYU. There is a, a story out there. They had a conversation with uh, an apostle of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Matthew Cowley, who helped convince him to go to BYU. He became the first athlete in BYU football history to letter in all four years of attending his school. He was an all-conference player for three of those years and was an honorable mention All-American during his senior season. A fantastic player, six foot one, 180 pounds, just a legendary player, a class of 1955 for BYU. So 1951 to 1955 55 were the years he played for BYU. He went on to go to medical school, uh, had a chance to play professional football, but passed on that, went to uh, pursue a career in medicine, got his medical degree from the University of Pennsylvania, and then returned to Utah where he worked at Cottonwood LDS Hospital. Now, this is where the story turns tragic for him. In 1965, so just 10 short years after his playing year, playing career had concluded, he's married, he had children. He and 12 others were killed when their Douglas DC-3 plane crashed into a hill near Camp Williams. I actually live literal minutes away from Camp Williams. It's on the west side of uh, the, the valleys of Salt Lake and Utah Valley. It's kind of right there, that little bottleneck, the point of the mountain. You look west. You know exactly where Camp Williams is at. He was among the eight passengers who had chartered the flight to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico to attend the Western Athletic Conference championship game between BYU and the University of New Mexico. Obviously, uh, this crash had all kinds of BYU supporters uh, saddened at the loss of a guy like Marion Probert. There were a number of high-level BYU boosters who were on that plate that were killed as well. But in 1977, BYU, in honor of his memory, retired his jersey number and inducted him into the BYU Athletic Hall of Fame. So since 1977, the number 81 has been retired. No player has worn that number since that time, and they will not wear that number. I know that there are some numbers like number six, number 14, uh, number nine in the BYU pantheon. You think of the great players who have worn those numbers. BYU doesn't typically give out those numbers, but they are not technically completely retired like the number 81 is in BYU history. Now, there might be some BYU officials out there that could help clarify this for me, but I believe that number 81 is the only number that is completely retired. There will be never another player that wears the number 81 in BYU history, and it's all in honor of Marion Probert. Dr. Marion Probert uh, passed away on uh, the crash happened uh, November 27th, 1965, the tail end of the season. Uh, there, I believe the uh, flight, uh, there was some fog when they took off from Salt Lake. They were traveling to Provo to pick up some more people, crashed at Camp Williams, and obviously 12 people lost their lives. Absolutely tragic and one of the bright careers, one of the greats in BYU football history, who I don't think necessarily gets talked about enough in this day and age. Let's see, 1977 to 2022. What, we're 50 some odd years past this, but it, it's one of those things that we 
probably need to talk about. And 81 days away from kickoff, I figured I'd talk a little bit more about Dr. Marion Probert and obviously his legacy he left for BYU. Like I said, the first considered to be blue chip player to pick BYU football in their uh, program history. Went on to be a four time on uh, all con- a three time all conference player, a four time letterman, an honorable mention All American, a standout defensive end for BYU, and obviously goes on to a great career in medicine before his life was cut tragically short at the age of 32. Crazy enough. I'm 35 now, so it's just crazy to me to think about. But one of the great players in BYU history, and that's who we are honoring on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. So there you go. That is going to do it for today's edition of the podcast. A huge thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. By the way, uh, this hat I'm wearing, uh, it's actually one of the hats that Alex Caress, a former BYU slash Portland State quarterback, he made. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite hats out there. Uh, so big shout out to Alex Caressa. And obviously, uh, funny enough, my wife is watching these videos a lot of the time. She said, you need to start wearing your hats more often. She got actually upset that I was not wearing my hats often enough. I got this hat wall behind me here. So maybe I'll get back to wearing more hats, but figure I'd wear one today to appease the missus. And obviously, it's always good to be a cougar out there every single day of the year. All right, that's going to do it once again for today's show. A big thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. Go make our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast your second listen of the day. We'd love nothing more than for you guys to get up to speed on everything going on with the Big 12 conference with Josh Neighbors, who is your host every day over there. Check that out wherever you get your podcast, just like this one, both on YouTube and in the regular podcast form. Until tomorrow, have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for June 14th. It is flag day, folks. Fly your flags high and proud on this day, and we will talk to you guys again tomorrow. See ya.